It's August the 22nd, 2015. I'm Dana Durnford, also known as the Nuclear Proctologist. Org, and you can find these videos and Fukushima presentations at Beautiful Girl Boy Dana on YouTube. The boat, what you're looking at is the Intrepid, and that was taken yesterday morning. I ran across to Vancouver Island, and we were on the expedition for life, traveling the Canadian coastline, looking at the tidal pools of British Columbia, Canada, and the damage from the radioactive fall and the jet streams and the ocean currents come straight across from Japan. The ocean current does it in 45 days. The coastline of British Columbia, Canada, temperature is maintained by the warm ocean currents from Japan year long. And so the radionuclides have a direct transport path across. As you can see with big swells, it's been a really rough trip. Let's give everybody a quick update on the trip because we have a very tiny bandwidth and I wanted to put a little video and explain to people what uh, we're doing. So this is the coastline of Canada, what you're looking at, British Columbia in particular, from one end of Canada to the other end of Canada. And so the red arrows is what we just covered to the Alaska border, Dixon uh, entrance up there. And that's Dundas Island Group. And then we've done Stephens Island, Poachers Island, Banks Island, um, Northwest Corner. These are all the West Coast. This is the Queen Charlotte's over there. Uh, and so this recent trip, as we come all the way down the coastline, Banks Island, Aristobal Island, Price Island, this is above Bella Bella, below Bella Bella, Calvert Island. And this is Vancouver Island. We're at the top of Vancouver Island right now. It was too rough to do the bottom of Calvert Island. So i got to run back to Calvert Island and run over towards what you see, Bull Harbor. There's a big provincial park, Cape Scott. And then we're going to go down the west side. And so this next one I got for you is the red ones are the ones we have done since August of last year. So basically the whole coastline. The green arrows is what is left to do on this expedition and finish off um, the expedition for life and then produce a documentary. And so this island is 460 kilometers long and so I still have a long way to go. The uh, west coast of Vancouver Island is a very very tough uh, coastline. There is a lot of bays and fjords and inlets but it's a very difficult coastline trust me in every sense of the word. It's the final leg of the journey and we're looking at the damage from the radioactive fallout. It's utter devastation on this entire coastline. And these are all the pictures from this particular expedition. And the pictures below, you see here, are from previous expeditions. And we have an amazing amount of data, but I mean, we had to do this last trip. We started at Dundas Island. And an interesting thing about this is, is uh, let me see what we got here. See this starfish coming up? This was Dundas Island right up by uh, Prince Rupert. There's nothing else on the rock. Just a little tiny bit of algae, is it a 600 algae? But I, was, I spotted this starfish right away. Yeah, we'll get a better picture of it. A little noisy here. And you can see this Starfish only got two legs and it's healed over. It was, that's fairly unusual to see. There was mostly melted starfish the whole time. Um, and this one managed to survive it. And what they call melting starfish, this is from the radioactive fallout. And on the last day on Calvert Island, we way down the coastline. Let me scroll down and find that for us. Um, I found its twin. Right above that, hang on. And so it's 4.30 in the morning. We're hoping to get this video up. Get, and so you can see another melted starfish. Uh, that's all I found each day was melted starfish, if I found any at all. And everything was damaged. There was literally no life left on the shoreline. If you can see the starfish, uh, you see the one on the first day. This is the one on the last day. At Calvert, 
I couldn't do yesterday morning. It was too rough out there, like that video I was showing you earlier. So we just got a small bandwidth, and we just wanted to get people up to speed that the expedition was ongoing. And you can see, out of 600 algaes, there's two or three algaes, and if they disappear, there will be nothing left on these rocks. They'll be naked. It'll be just like being in a mountain. Uh, the radioactive fallout is real. It really sh it's not like bananas, it's not like potato chips, it's not like walking in sunshine. It's not like getting on an airplane. It's deadly and it's devastating, and it has annihilated the entire coastline of Canada in particular that we have identified. And as you can see, we have extensively, extensively covered this entire coastline at great cost and pearl and you know, monetary and energy and just coordination in order so we can have a debate. It's time to have that debate. We're I'm heading down, uh, to, I would say I'm going to take a couple of days off. It's been a long trip, tough trip. It's been a very tough trip, very big seas. And we're doing the west side of the island, so there's nowhere to hide. And so I've really been put through the paces this time. And I want to finish this trip out. We have to raise enough money to continue on down the coastline and finish this out. So I'm heading for the west coast. I have to fit I head back up to Calvert, to the bottom of Calvert. And what you're seeing here is we're doing every 20 nautical miles, basically down the coastline. If there's a spot to do within that 20 nautical miles, basically we'll go do it. And a lot of times we're dead on to the 20 nautical miles. We've done the Charlottes during the winter. We've done a 160 day expedition on the ocean without coming home. We don't want to do that no more. But it had to be done to identify whether it was damaged or not. What we found was, you know, the 600 algae is only a couple exist anymore. Out of the, the 78 species of sea anemones, only a couple of species exist in the tidal pools. The tidal pools are naked. The mussels, the mollusks, the shellfish, the, the every industry, the birds, the insects. This trip, we didn't find any spiders in the woods. We didn't hear any small birds on the islands very very eerie trip um, I'm worn out but I'm in good spirit that we finished this out and it can't be denied unfortunately anymore we have to face this we have to deal with this so it's just a short video to let every give everybody an update because it's so hard to find any bandwidth on the coastline it's not like we have very much money you know even if you got a lot of money you can't get that bandwidth anyway uh, and I only said that that way because it would be nice to have that cell phone, a satellite phone, to be able to forward the live stream right from the site. Well, we still got 460 miles to go. And that's a long way, trust me. We're doing the wildest part of the coastline, again, the west coast. And I'll try to get another update, a short update, for sure, before I leave on Monday or Tuesday when the weather breaks. I have a lot of repairs to do on the boat. We wrecked the boat this trip. And so I've been hard at it all day today and tomorrow and next day. And when the weather breaks, I got everything finished, hopefully, what I can get. Um, I am going to have to find a way. I'm going to have to drive today sometime or tomorrow, or I guess not tomorrow, it'll be Sunday. But Monday, I might have to run down Island and pick up uh, supplies to fix the boat with, get back up and put it together and get back out there on that ocean and finish off this trip. So I still got a long way to go. I desperately need support at this stage. We just went all the way to Alaska. All those red coming down, pointing to your right, is the outside of Canada, it was West Coast archipelagos, and uh, we just conquered that. It was an incredible, difficult trip. And after a few days, I'm ready to go again and do all the green arrows down the outside of it. And that'll be a complete, we completely covered the entire coastline at that stage, right? No turn, no stones left on turn. And we got to get that documentary out there. We got to finish this out once again. That's why we're here. That's why we exist. And we are going to get this job done. Then, then the world needs to have a conversation. A real conversation this time that man-made radiation is not like a banana 
It's not like a potato chip. It's not like walking in the sunshine. It's not like getting on an airplane. And so why are all the academics telling you it is? I'm Dana Durfers. You can find these videos of beautiful girl boy Dana. And you can find the pictures at the nuclear proctologist. A majority of these red arrows are already up. The pictures are already up at the nuclear proctologist. Hugs for everybody. And once again, folks, I need your support to keep going. You can donate at PayPal, DanaDurnford at Hotmail.com or at the Nuclear Proctologist with credit cards. This is all legitimate and this is a crowd-funded emergency response to the radioactive fallout from Japan. Please support the Fukushima expedition. I'm tired of struggling. I, I'm tired of asking, but it's, we have to do this. So, Hugs for everybody. Take care, folks.